Hello, Mr. Morenci's class. It's uh, Mrs. Facto, and I am here to show you how to find resources for your project that you're doing on Westward Expansion. So, uh, Mr. Morenci tells me that you've mostly gotten resources already from the program that I can't remember the name of that you use for your class, and that is great because what you're learning with that is how to synthesize information that you're given, and that's really good, but a piece of research that that leaves out is the actual searching. We have a lot of innate skills to do that because, you know, the internet has become such a big part of our lives. But when you're doing research, like academic research, there are certain types of resources that are going to be easier for you to use and save you time in that uh, these are resources that are valid, that you don't have to worry about, you know, did some, you know, <laughs> did the person who wrote this actually know what they're talking about? So I'm just going to uh, really quickly show you three different types of resources. There's books, there's uh, the database articles, and then um, internet resources that you find on your own, but for academic purposes. So if you start at uh, BHS Online, the high school website, that'll get you to the library website, which kind of lays these out. So if you go to About Our School, down to library, library resources, and this should be vaguely familiar from last year. I show all the ninth grade classes this. There's a few things here that um, you might not have seen before. So to find books in the library, you click on access catalog here, and it brings you to our um, catalog, and then you put in whatever you're looking for, Westward Expansion, um, which is kind of general. Um, I heard that, you know, Trail of Tears, things like that, or other topics. You could look those up individually as well. This is going to give you more general overview. So you've got um, Westward Expansion. Here's a bunch of different, um, different titles. And uh, pay attention to this one, American West. We're going to come back to that in a minute. All right, so let's say that you're interested in this one, Westward Expansion, History of the American Frontier. You click on that. And it says that it's available from Beverly High School Library. Awesome. The number is 973. 973 is a super general number. Usually you're going to have a number like this where it's got uh, decimal points. Um, these numbers, it's called the call number, and they correspond with the bookshelves in the library. So you just look for the bookshelf that has this number in its uh, section. You go to that shelf. They're, they're numerically ordered. Once you find the number, then um, they're broken down further by the decimal point. If there's a bunch of 170.44 books, then you would look for the first three letters of the author's last name. All right, once you find a book, if you want to take it out, in the inside back cover, there's a number. It's usually only six digits, but some of the newer ones have uh, 13. You only need the last six digits. And what you do is at the main desk of the library, there's a clipboard that says check out books here. You put your first name, your last name, your grade, the title of the book, and then this little number, and I'll check that in for you. Okay, I'll check that out for you. Um, you can keep a book as long as you need to. Just return it when you're done with it. Uh, you'll get these really scary reminders that say that you have a book out. Just uh, reply to that and say, hey, I'm still using this book, and I'll return it for you. Okay, so that's how you find books. It's pretty easy. When you're, um, I'm assuming that you have to do some sort of annotated bibliography so that the bibliography information that you need is this stuff right here. When you're searching for resources, you should keep like a Google Doc open so you can copy and paste all of this stuff. Even if you don't use this, if you've looked at it, keep a record of it because A, it makes sure it makes your bibliography look super jacked. But also it um, if you decide, oh shoot, you know what? I do want that book after all, then you can go back and find it. All right, so we're gonna go back to here and look at the databases. The databases, you click on access databases here. You don't need a password for these anymore. Um, these are all, they look like websites, but they're actually physical books and articles that have been digitized for your convenience. So depending on what you're using, there's a lot of really good ones. There's biography and context, there's environmental studies, health and wellness, uh, posing viewpoints. This is great if you're ever looking up anything that's like, you know, conflict ridden. Um, but for your purposes, U.S. history and context is going to be where you get most of your good information. So once you click on that, it brings you here and you can put in your topic. So let's say, do they have Westward Expansions? Oh, Manifest Destiny and Westward Expansion. Okay, so if you click on that, it brings you to this collection of resources. So they give you an overview here, and then you can uh, look at them by type. 
So we've got featured content. That's what the librarians at Gale, the people who put this together, they think are important. You've got reference books here, which are just like the books in the library that have been digitized for your convenience. Um, images, you've got primary sources, which are always handy, biographies. But the main three things that you're going to look at are magazines, academic journals, and newspaper articles. So newspaper articles tell you why this is still important. Um, Magazine articles are sort of a general overview. They assume you don't know much, and they're going to give you an overview. And then academic journals, these are really dense writing by experts. But the thing about that, so they're harder to read, but they um, give you a lot more information to use as fodder for your project. So um, there's a lot to be said for these, particularly in 11th grade, you're going to be focusing on these. Let's just look at events of the West. We're going to look at this magazine article. Oh, it's Beth Transcontinental Railroad. How exciting. So you read this, blah, blah, blah. It's not that long, but it turns out it's something that you want. Here's your citation. Okay, so down at the bottom, um, since you're using Turabian or Chicago, it's the same thing. You click on that, and then you just copy and paste that put that in your doc and you've got your citation right there. The databases are really interesting. You can also put in more specific things. So Indian removal and the Trail of Tears, um, that'll have other information for that. You can search this like you would a Google search. You won't always find a collection, but if you find a collection, that's super lucky. Um, all right, we're gonna go back here. So all of the databases are kind of set up that way. Um, I just wanted to show you really quick. Remember I said to keep an eye on that one book. This Salem Press History Books, if you click on here, it brings you to our Salem Press page. You do have to use a password here. The password is Beverly Panther, just like the panther that comes out every football game. All right, so once you get here, it'll say Beverly High School Library. If you just put in the word Panther, it takes you to a different school that has like two books. If it doesn't say Beverly High School, you're in the wrong place. Log out and log back in with Beverly Panther. All right, so you can do a general search here if you want, but there are also, they're broken down by eras. These are all books about um, primary resources from different areas of American history. They're super useful um, for specifically what you're doing now. So defining documents in American history, the American West, this is the sweet spot for your for your work. So there's seizing land from native California, there's Fremont expedition across the Sierras, across the plains in 1844. All of these are uh, different um, things that were written in that time, primary resources. My favorite is the Donner Party Diary. Do you guys know about the Donner Party? It was a bunch of people who were going west who ended up getting trapped in the mountains, the Sierras, and ended up, well, they resorted to cannibalism. It was, it was quite something. Anyway, this is actually two resources in one. There's this information about this primary resource, which is written by K.P. Dawes, who's you know a modern-day person. But then there's also... The original um, primary resource document, that's written by Patrick Breen. He was in that party. So the, uh, the original document is right here. This is his diary of that time. All right, so that counts as a primary resource. And when you cite that, you'll cite it as Patrick Breen is the author. However, there's also all of this commentary. There's a summary overview, why it's a defining moment, biography of the author. And then afterward, you've got document analysis and essential themes. Your citation is down here. You're using Chicago, also known as Turabian, so that's the citation that you would use. This is great because it counts as two resources, um, but you're all in one place, and you know because it's from the section that it's relevant to your theme. So this is a really nice, um, pretty specific resource for you. The last thing I want to look at is the Internet. I'm sure you've been there before. Simple Google search. Uh, let's do Trail of Tears again. And Trail of Tears, you put that in there, and it gives you 44 million results. Okay, that's rather a lot. For, I think I showed you when you were freshman how to go up to Settings, go to Advanced Search, and then if you put in EDU, that brings up Educational Resources. For American History, G, you cannot beat GOV. GOV uh, gives you U.S. government sites, and if you click on that, it brings you down to a mere 106 uh, 
thousand results, which is still you know more than you go through in a day. But it um, it really it, everything that you're going to find here is a U.S. government site, so everything in here is going to be citable by the U.S. government. The U.S. government is your is your um, your source, so it's quite easy to use these. Um, if you're doing a general Google search, the problem with it, yeah, you're going to get you know, information that you probably is accurate, but you don't know where it's coming from, especially for the era that you're using um, for U.S. history. It's very easy to cite the U.S. government. This is the national, NPS is the National Park Service. I don't know what M an LM is. Hmm. Let's find out. I'm curious. Um, Native people, NLM. National Library of Medicine, how interesting. All right, wow, that's kind of fascinating. <laughs> You're welcome, Trail of Tears people. Okay, so um, the state of Kentucky, uh, Federal Work System, Library of Congress, so all of these you can quote by their organization. It's much easier than trying to figure out who wrote an article that you found on some random website just because it was right there. So um, I highly recommend narrowing your web search to government. You can also do EDU sites. You just have to be careful because sometimes you'll have student work, sometimes you'll have work by um, experts. If you ever find something that you really want to use, a resource, and you can't figure out where it's from, come and find me because I love investigating that sort of thing and I will help you. So I believe that's all that I have for you today. Um, if you have any questions, come on down and talk to me, and um, that's it. Have a great day. Bye.